Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Spilling the Beans. Um, today, I'm going to finish off the list of my favorite video games, and then I'm going to talk about some announcements for things coming up in the future. So first of all, I'm going to get out of this squeaky chair, get to a less squeaky one. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, so, anyway, so video games. Um, Splinter Cell is one of my favorite video games. Now, Splinter Cell is a franchise. Um, you've got, I can't, I don't know how many games there are now. There's probably like eight or nine. I think there's eight. But the first three are my favorite. Because after the third one, I think the plot gets all weird. And I don't know it. They start putting in inappropriate things. I don't really, I'm not into that. And so I just m mostly just swearing, I think. And I don't know. The first three are my favorite. Um, and the thing, the premise of Splinter Cell is that you're this spy who works for the U.S. government named Sam Fisher, and you go into these different places very stealthily you sneak into places you have to incapacitate people and you know finish the mission whatever it is um so you can save the u.s from whatever or you know what whatever country from whatever threat and it's really cool it's it's a stealth based game meaning that you're awarded for not just going in guns a blazing and you I totally just lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, you're rewarded for not just blowing things. Because there's a lot of games, um, a lot of first-person shooters out there where you just go in and you shoot everything. You know, you just try to destroy everything. <laughs> and that's how you win, pretty much. I In the last episode, I talked about Red Faction Guerrilla, which is a game where you just blow things up, pretty much. And it's really fun. Um, but Splinter Cell is different. You're rewarded for being quiet and being strategic in how you deal with um, things that you encounter. So um, you're, you're rewarded for not killing people because killing people is louder. And in the third game, you're actually docked points from your completion score for each person that you kill, which I think that's cool that they're discouraging killing. They're incentivizing um, keeping people alive which is something people should do anyway, it, when possible. Um, <clears throat> goodness, Flem City today. Um, and you have to be strategic about how you do stuff. So let's say there's a guard, come, there's a guard up ahead and you have to get past him. Um, if you're really good, you can just sneak by him without him noticing, you know, and you won't even have to do anything. That's what I try to do when I play that game is just sneak by people. But usually it's really hard. And the easiest way is to incapacitate them or kill them if you're a loser. <laughs> or, but um, <clears throat> sometimes when you uh, get someone, so you grab them from behind and you got them in like a, a headlock pretty much. And you can, sometimes you can interrogate them for valuable information. If they've not, if you've, after you've interrogated them and, and, or if they've got nothing to say, well, or if they've not got, got nothing to say oh brother i can't talk um then you knock them out and the thing is you don't just knock them out and then just leave the body wherever you have to put the body uh you have to hide it you have to actually hide it you have to put it in the shadows where no one will see it and the way you can tell if some place is dark enough is you you have this meter this meter on the screen that tells you how dark the place that you are in is because you got these uh, photo cells, I think is how they describe it, all over the suit that you're wearing, the special stealth suit. And it notifies you um, kind of if people can see you, if people can't, kind of things like that. Um, <clears throat> and so, sorry, I just got a notification, got to turn that off. I really just got to silence this so it doesn't distract me. Wow, that's very unprofessional of me, and I apologize. Um, <laughs> anyway, 
Um, so yeah, you have to you have to hide the bodies, and you you have to hide yourself in the shadows as well. Um, and you have to you can shoot out lights to provide more cover, but you have to be careful because people nearby could hear it or notice that the lights out. Um, so the the people walking around that you have to get by, they can they'll notice things if you're not careful. They can hear you if you're going too quickly. They can see you or, you know, they can notice something you've done. Like you can turn off a light switch and people will be like, hey, turn that on, <laughs> turn that back on. Who was that? Or whatever. So you you don't want to draw attention to yourself. And you have all these gadgets you can use. You have these sticky cameras that you can shoot at a wall. And that enables you to, from wherever you are, to look around and see a different perspective and get a better grasp of kind of what you have to do. Um, you have like different grenades. You have you have explosive ones, which I discourage using those whenever possible. You have gas grenades, which incapacitates them, not decapitates. I confuse decapitate and incapacitate when I was younger. They are very different. Um, <laughs> there's no decapitations in this game. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, you you can there's environmental uh, things like things in your environment you can use to help yourself. Like sometimes there's like a alcohol bottle. Uh, that you can throw and it'll shatter wherever it hits. And so that can cause some noise for, and that'll distract the guards and then you can walk by them or whatever, or you can, <laughs> you can knock them out. You can throw the bottle right at their head and it'll knock them out. <laughs> but then the bottle will hit the ground and break. So hopefully there's no one else. And the thing is, if you knock someone out and someone else finds them, they'll wake them up and then they'll both be on alert. And so you have to be really careful. Um, it's really cool. It's really satisfying to just do it and not leave a trace, you know, and not to not kill anyone. Cause it's like, yeah, if you don't have to kill them, you shouldn't, you know, I mean, in war, you know, <laughs> I don't mean to wax philosophical, but sometimes you got to kill people in war <laughs> to protect others. But in this situation, those guards aren't a direct threat. And so you can just walk by, you don't have to kill them. You know, they're just put, <laughs> I'm getting all choked up. Uh, they're just patrolling the area. And so, yeah. A anyway, I love that game. It's very fun. And it's awesome because if someone sees you, the music just goes like, Dum! like something really obvious, Dum! like a piano note, a low piano note hit, Dum! and you're like, oh no. And then the music starts to get all frantic and you have to like hide. It, it can, it's fun. I love that game. And then the last game on the list is Terraria or Terraria, however you pronounce it. Um, I pronounce it Terraria. Um, but to before I talk about Terraria, I have to talk about Minecraft, which isn't one of my favorite games, but it's famous enough that if you don't know what it is, then... Well, if you don't know what Minecraft... If you've never heard of Minecraft, then you don't exist. <laughs> because Minecraft is one of the most famous video games of all time, no doubt. It's had... A, um, I mean, it's won so many awards, I'm sure. It's just every every gamer knows what Minecraft is. There's no way that you play video games and you don't know about it. But what Minecraft is, is it's this world where everything is made of cubes. And you can create things with these cubes. You can uh, do a survival mode where you start out with nothing and you have to... You're this person that's all cube-like and everything's made of cubes. The critters, the water, the landscape everything, the people, and there's the survival mode where you start out as nothing and you have to gather materials um, to craft tools and craft armor. You can build structures. You can find other civilizations, other villages, come across crazy monsters and things, and you have to survive, obviously. <laughs> and there's this ultimate goal where you have to defeat this evil dragon in this other dimension type thing that you figure out later on. And it's pretty fun. Although for, for me, it's a little slow and I'm sure that's an abnormal feeling when it comes to Minecraft because just because I have to be engaged 24 seven, otherwise I'm going to lose interest. Um, and 
that's where Terraria comes in. Terraria is a very similar concept. You start out with nothing. Well, you start out with a few things, but it's pretty much nothing um, in con in comparison or contrast. I don't know which one to use <laughs> in comparison to like all the other things that you can acquire in the world. Now, Minecraft is 3D, meaning you can look around in every direction as if you know you're looking around in real life. Uh, but Terraria is 2D, meaning um, instead of a first person view, you get like a third person view of your character and a bunch of the world. Um, since it's only 2D, um, you can go up, down, left, right. <laughs> and so you see yourself and everything's made, of, it's kind of the same thing. Everything's made of cubes. Everything's made of squares in Terraria. Um, and you can change the shape of the squares by hitting it with certain tools and things. Um, so it's pretty simplistic as part of, as far as like the designing aspect of it goes, the creativity. Um, but the thing with Terraria is that there's a lot more, uh, materials. There's a lot more resources. I feel like Terraria has so much more to offer and it's so fun, um, exploring things and finding chests full of good things. And, and, and these are all components of, Minecraft, but I feel like in Terraria, it's extra fun for some reason. Um, cause I don't know. I, I love the feeling of just like, you never know what, you sh what you're going to get and you know, what monsters you're going to come across and you, you want to make sure you have the right materials so that you're strong enough to go to certain areas and you have all these different, uh, biomes. Like you got the jungle, the tundra, the desert, you have the ocean, you have the crimson, or corruption area, which is basically like the evil, gross place. That's very dangerous. You know, you can go underground, you can build to the sky and find these islands in the clouds. It's really fun game. I, I enjoy it quite a bit. It is really, really fun. Um, and yeah, it, it's very addicting. I, I learned about that game by playing it at my friend's house. And I only played it a little bit. And I was like, I need to get this game. And I got it. It's so fun. I've I've played a lot of hours of that game. <laughs> it is really fun. Very addicting, so be warned, but it is very fun. Alrighty, so let's talk about those announcements that I was teasing in the last episode. So lately I have been wondering, you know, how I should spend my time because um I've been struggling with um, depression, anxiety, uh, and ADHD. Um, I, I talked about these things more comprehensively, more comprehensively, con comprehensively, goodness sakes, in a episode from last season. And basically, it just makes, it makes everything more difficult. Um, it makes finding motivation to do things difficult. Um, I'm always worrying about everything, even trivial things that it doesn't even make sense to worry about. Um, and sometimes I just, I, it's really hard for me to feel at peace and feel happy and it's just out of my control. And so, um, it makes doing things very difficult. It makes going to school difficult. It makes working hard. And so I've been trying to kind of find this balance of what, um, what is working for me as far as like what I can do and what, like, what can I do basically? And so, and like, what, what about these things that I'm experiencing is permanent? And like, what can I change? I've been trying to get a grasp on that. And I thought in the meantime, I should at least, I got to at least do something productive. Something that holds me back is I have this uncertainty of how things are going to go. And that made, that makes it so that I don't, get anything done. I'm, I'm just so afraid of how things are working or how things are going to play out. You know, like I'm worried about choosing the right thing to do or the wrong thing that I don't end up doing anything. <laughs> and that doesn't, that doesn't help anyone. No one improves when they don't do anything. And so I've been trying to find or figure out like what I should do with my time. And I, I, have been taking some time to really examine myself and kind of find out, all right, what, what are my talents? You know, what am I interested in? What am I good at? And how can I apply that to 
real life? Like, how can I apply that to a job or what something I could go into and get a degree in if that's something I want to do and stuff like that. And, um, uh, the other day, um, well, first of all, I will talk about my liking, my love for music. I love music a lot. I, I made a whole episode about it the in last season, and music's just been a huge part of my life. I can't remember if I explained why I love, like how I got to love music so much, um, but the two pivotal people in my life that um, they've really changed my life are Matthew Thornton and Tracy Warby, two choir teachers that I had in junior high and high school. They really helped me have a great love for music. I, I wasn't always really into music. I mean, my mom, she, you know, tried to teach me piano and I, I did it off and on many times, but I was never like fully invested in it. And I don't know. I, I could never, fo- I could never focus on, I could never play music because I could never focus on more than one hand at a time. Really. That was something I struggled with. Um, and that, now it makes sense why, but I didn't really have too big a background in music. I wasn't a singer, you know, I didn't sing like who sings, man, only people in Disney movies. <laughs> that was probably my mentality as a kid, but Um, seventh grade rolls around and I need to register for classes before I start seventh grade. Um, first of all, that was a rough summer because I had a hernia surgery to start out the summer. And then I got my wisdom teeth out at 12. Can you believe that? 12 It had something to do with braces. And then I got my braces and then I went into junior high. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is pretty much the, that's definitely probably the worst time of my life as far as like unfortunate events. <laughs> but um, anyway, I was re- registering for classes and there are certain classes you need to take. You need to get certain types of credits. And one of them was fine arts credits. And that's pretty much like band, choir, orchestra, you know, one of the music classes, musical theater. Um, I can't remember if that also included like art class or ceramics and stuff. I can't remember, but I needed the class and I, I didn't have any experience with any instruments really. And I didn't want to pay for band. My family didn't want to pay for band. It was really expensive. So I was like, you know what? I'll just do choir, you know, half year class and get that credit and then get out of here. So I took the class, um, walked in like, all right, I guess this will be fun. You know, I kind of like singing, you know, um, but Um, the teacher, Matthew Thornton, he's just a phenomenal human being. He, he is amazing. Um, he, um, taught the class in such a way that I just, I loved music and he was a great guy. I loved him. He made me want to do it. I had so much fun in that class, um, that I took it again. I took it in eighth grade. Um, so then it was a year long men's choir class. And then I loved that class. So I took it the next year, ninth grade, AF Singers. Remember, AF stands for American Fork, not the other thing. Um, (laughs) And AF Singers, that had girls in it. So of course I'm going to that class. You know, it's got girls and I get to sing next to a girl. And guess what? I I was like right next to girls because of the, the way the choir was set up. The basses, I was a low bass, my my voice had changed to bass at that time. And I got to sit next to the girls. I think it was the altos. I can't remember how it was set up, but I remember sitting next to girls. That was awesome. But now I'm just talking about girls, but that was a great class and I loved it. And so I was like, I'm going to take it in high school from Mrs. Warby. I've heard that she's kind of a crazy person, <laughs> you know, and, and that's coming from someone that didn't know anything about her. And then I met Tracy Warby. Same, she's a phenomenal human being, phenomenal woman. She's just amazing. She she um, built on the love that Matthew Thornton had, uh, the love for music that Matthew Thornton had planted in me, and she helped nourish and grow it. Um, she's a great teacher. She's hilarious. She 
she helped me stay in music. I took the men's choir sophomore year and I tried out for the chamber choir and I got in. So I was in the chamber choir for junior and senior year. That was a great privilege. And I also took AP music theory from her uh, my senior year. And that class, that, that class really broadened my perspective of music, it really changed it because when I hear certain chords in songs now, I associate a number with it because of that class. And and you would think that that would be annoying, but I it helps me appreciate the music and it helps me understand why music sounds good, why it sounds so good. I can I, I can identify why I like it. And it's same it it's same with me. <laughs> it is the same uh, thing with the music that I like. You know, I, I got my first MP3 player when I was 12, I think. Um, listen to music. And then after I took that class, I listened to the same music and I was able to pinpoint the specific things about the songs that I listened to that I enjoyed. And it made me enjoy it more. My appreciation for it just grew exponentially. I got into Rush shortly after that. Um, I haven't always been a Rush fan my whole life, but they're, they may be my favorite band of all time. Um, one of them at least. And I love them so much because of their musicianship. I can identify the difficulty in their playing and why it's so awesome and amazing. And I love that group. And I love music like that in general. Music that's fun to listen to, you know, uplifting, wholesome, and music that's that's different. You know, music that's, well, I guess different's not always a good thing. I mean, I don't like 21 Pilots and they're definitely, they're definitely different. <laughs> um, no offense to um, 21 Pilots, you know, you guys do your own thing. I think I might've ripped on them on my past episode. So if 21 Pilots listens to this and finds this offensive, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I like to listen to music that's hard to perform. You know, it, it really takes talent because I feel like a lot of the music today it's less about the musicianship and more about the popularity. Um, you know, there's the band Imagine Dragons. You know, I, I I like many of their songs. You know, it's it's a band I was keeping up with. One of the few bands of today's music that I was actually interested in. Um, and they came out with an album recently, and I just wasn't impressed by it just because I thought they were just trying to appeal. They they were trying to get on the radio, and I don't. That's not. Being on the radio is not an important criteria for me at all when it comes to music that I like. It's like, if it's on the radio, great. If it's not, whatever. If I like it, I like it. And I and I feel like you shouldn't substitute popularity for quality. You know, it's like you should do your own thing. And, you know, who cares if it gets on the radio? Who cares how many people listen to it? If you made it, that's awesome. It's your creation. You you do it without the the influence of um, other thing, other motives, I guess. Don't make something just to be popular. Make it because it's your thing and you you are proud of it. Um, anywho, um, so I love music. It's really random. It's a really random life story of how I love how I got into music, how I love it so much. And I'm not a music expert, you know, I'm not a music scholar or I'm or I'm, I'm not well versed in the history of music or all the genres or whatever. I just I love the music that I know and I know why I like it. And I just I have a, I have a great appreciation for it. Music enables me to focus on things. I whenever I go on a drive, I am always listening to music because it helps me focus and you and that's what you need when you have ADHD and you're going around driving on the streets you know you, you you need to focus so that you don't kill anyone and music helps me do that um and it helps me just get things done in general like if there's chores to be done at home um I listen to music <laughs> it's really funny because if I hear music playing in the kitchen and my mom's in there I'm like or yeah, if I hear music in the kitchen 
it's like, oh, my mom must be doing, my mom must be cleaning today. <laughs> That's how I can tell she's doing it because she's listening to music. That's kind of a joke we have in our family, but um, it's uh, music is just, it, it's a huge part of, I, I like music a lot. I love music a lot. I love doesn't even begin to describe music for me. It's, I, I can't explain it. Like it's beyond just enjoyment. Um, it's this profound sense of euphoria that just fills my soul. That sounds cheesy, but really it music, good uplifting music, really. And even the occasional like, yeah, get out of my way, sucker. Even, even that kind of music can be fun, but it, it's just, it's amazing. And I mean, some people like music. I'm sure most people like music, you know, they listen to music, they have their preferences of genres or artists or whatever. But I, I, so I love music a lot, though. Like, I don't know if they like it as much as me. And I have many friends um, that are kind of music geeks like me that kind of understand where I'm coming from. Um, oh, another thing, another reason music has changed my life. Thanks again to Matthew Thornton and Tracy Warby, two of my favorite people in the world of all time. Um, another reason they helped change my life is because of all the friends that I met through choir. Um, you know, I, I moved to American Fork near the end of fifth grade and then sixth grade, you know, I, I was there, but, and then going into junior high, you know, I, I had some friends, but you know, I didn't really know too many people, but because I was in choir, I was able to get to know several people, just dozens and dozens and dozens of people that have just been exceptional examples to me. They've really helped me out in times of need. You know, they've got my back. I still keep in touch with them. Um, my friend from choir, he sent me a, a video, a link to a trailer for the new Star Wars, uh, Rise of the Skywalkers or something, of uh, something like that. It looks so cool, by the way. That trailer looks so cool. You have to watch it um, if you like Star Wars. And even if you don't, you should watch it anyway. But um, anyway, my friends are are amazing and I know that God directed me to music j just for friends, just because of the amazing people that I've met in my life, for sure. Um, I, I've just been so blessed because of music. Um, it's just, it's been a huge part of my life. Um, in, and in many ways that I did not expect. And I'm grateful for that. Um, I found out that I have perfect pitch because of music. Um, I, I probably never would have known that if I had never, uh, like taken choir or been around people that, you know, know stuff about music. <laughs> I, I remember when I figured out I had perfect pitch, I was with my friend, Brian, we were, I think we were doing English homework or something to prepare for the next English class for junior year. And we were just in my front room and, uh, Brian was messing around with the piano or something and he, and he was I can't remember how it happened, but he, I named a note without any reference or anything. And he was like, whoa, how'd you do that? I was like, what are you talking about? How'd you name that note without any help? And I was like, can't everyone do that? <laughs> Is that stupid? I was so oblivious. I I seriously, and, and that and throughout, throughout men's choir, I would hear people sing out a tune and I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, do you want to get in trouble? Because I thought they were doing it on purpose, but they were just tone deaf. I was like, why are you so bad, man? <laughs> I didn't say that to anyone, actually, but <laughs> I mean, that's that's how a little I knew about it. And so I figured that out. I, I utilized it once my teacher found out, Mrs. Warby, she was like, all right, well, you're the pitch pipe for a chamber now. <laughs> I was like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, and so I'll... I'll the reason I'm explaining all of this, all my love for music is because um, I've recently gotten back into writing music. Um, I, I love writing music, actually. It's, it's something I kind of experimented with two or three years ago um, with this uh, software that my choir teacher gave me. She had a, an old copy of this other software um, called Notate, I think. And uh, I was playing around with that. And it was kind of fun. It was an older version. So the sound wasn't the best. And 
I think it was intended more for the writing of sheet music, which is not something I really want to do. Um, um, but it was fun and I played around with it. I was like, Oh, okay. This, this is a lot of fun. I didn't realize this about myself that I like doing this. And then the other day I was listening to Lincoln park and I like, I'm not the biggest Lincoln park fan, but they have a few songs that I really enjoy. Um, and I was listening to him and I was thinking, you know, a lot of these songs would sound good with the other ones. I bet I could kind of do a, ma- a Linkin Park mashup. You know, that, that could be fun. And so I looked online for some music software I could use. I found this article that led me to this free software that got really good reviews called LMMS. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it stands for. I'm actually at, I'm at the computer right now, so I'll just look that up. Um, but it's, uh, let's see, Wikipedia, Linux Multimedia Studio. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> anyway, oh man, that would have been a disaster. I almost closed the recording thing. <laughs> I had to start over. Uh, okay, anyway. I, so I downloaded it and I started playing around with it. I'm like, all right, this is kind of cool. And eventually I, uh, I made this kind of Linkin Park tribute. It was a mashup of seven different Linkin Park songs. And, um, I'm really proud of it. I I thought it was cool. Um, it it was my first attempt, you know, so I'm sure it's not perfect. And I was kind of hesitant about, you know, uh, showing people because it's like, what if they don't like it? It's like, whatever, you know, I like it. I think it's cool. Um, not everyone's as critical. No one thinks about music and most people don't think about music the way I do. And so if they have any problems, they won't be nitpicky ones like the ones I would have. And so, um, so yeah, I, I, um, com- I composed it, a little arrangement um, and I'm going to put it uh, it's going to be the outro for this episode, uh, since I'm doing outros now. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I don't know. It's so basically what I'm saying is that, um, I'm going to be working on music stuff. I, I felt really good about it. I feel like that's something I could do and, um, and that could work out for me. Uh, I don't know about career wise, but like, that's something I want to do is I want to get my music known. I want to get it out there. And, you know, I'm not expecting to get big, you know, be on the radio. Um, I just want to do what I want to do and, you know, utilize my talents for something worthwhile. Um, and I've, and I've, I've also made three other songs that I'll announce in later podcast episodes. Um, I'll probably p- play a song in each episode. And... Yeah, I, I hope to release it someday, put them on, on sale, you know, for, I don't know, be able to download them. And I, I don't know where any of this is going to go. I have no idea really what I'm doing, but you know what? I'm going to do research. I'm going to look it up and it's going to be great. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about it though. I, I hope that people will be able to listen to my music, be able to give me some feedback, you know, hopefully they'll enjoy it. Um, and yeah, another thing I want to do, um, well, I want, I want to, I'm going to keep doing this podcast. I really enjoy this podcast. Um, I've been doing it. People have told me good things about it. There's no, I don't have too many followers. In fact, I went on anchor. It says that the estimated number of listeners I have is seven and, and there's seven people in my family. So it's like, oh, well that's embarrassing, but I, Hey, I've made a total of 53 cents on anchor. I can't remember if I said that before. But hey, that's, I could buy half a Twix for that or whatever. And so I hope that as I do these other projects that they'll, I can promote the other ones through them and it'll kind of be a chain reaction type thing. And I'll just, I don't know, get more people to listen in, get maybe a community going or something. I don't know. But uh, also my uh, artist name is Alpha Bean. That's right, people. DJ Alpha Bean. <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah, I don't know where Alpha Bean came from. Honestly, I think I was like, you know, if I was a DJ, I, I, 
I'm I'm almost 100 percent sure this was my tr- my way of thinking. I was probably like, all right, what would my DJ name be? It's something to do with Bean. I'm going to start at the beginning of the alphabet. Alpha Bean. Hey, <laughs> honestly, that's probably what happened. I was going to go down the alphabet and like do words or something, but I was like, hey, Alpha Bean. Or maybe like Delta Bean would sound cooler. I like Alpha Bean. Too late. Alpha Bean, that's my name, Alpha Bean. But so, yeah, I, and I don't know yet how these songs will be available other than I'll put them in the podcast. And also the thing with um, a lot of my the ideas that I've had, they're kind of mashups of pre-existing songs. And so people do covers and stuff all the time. I don't know the copyright thing. I mean, I'm not claiming to have uh, like been the original composer for the melodies, you know, obviously I, you know, I would never want to take away that from them, you know? Um, and so I don't know what that is. I think I'll, maybe all you have to do is acknowledge kind of just that this is a, an arrangement, you know, address the credit and stuff. But anyway, I'm going to be doing that. Also, something I've always wanted to do, but never really taken seriously was have like a gaming channel on YouTube, which, um, I mean, and, I, and again, these aren't things that I'm planning on doing like for a career, but I, I've just, I felt good about it. I, video games are, I play video games all the time. Video games are, they're a way for me to um, reduce stress. They're, I find them very fun. They're, they're calming for me. Um, and so I thought it'd be fun to get a gaming channel, you know, kind of like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, um, Get Good Gaming, those channels. Um, and just do that for fun. You know, if I get a lot of views, great. If I don't, great. You know, just whatever. <laughs> um, and so I'll probably be doing that sometime in the future. I will uh, make some announcements about that, I'm sure. Um but yeah, just podcast, music, the gaming thing. The, I think those are the main things um, for now, at least. And again, I, I don't know where any of this is going to go. I have no idea. I just, I have a good feeling about it. I, I feel at peace with these things. And that's not something that I experience very often. I, I'm, not, I'm not always at peace about things. I'm usually worrying about it. But when it comes to this, I, I feel good about it. Um, and, you know, maybe this isn't the end game. Maybe this isn't what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, you know. Um, maybe this is just a stepping stone, which, you know, that's fine for me as long as I'm making progress. And so, anyway, so more updates about that in the future. But those are those are just a few things that you can be expecting. Um, so... Anyway, thanks again for everyone that's listened to the podcast so far. I really appreciate it. I saw that my old boss from when I was a janitor in high school favorited my podcast. And I was like, hey, check that out. That's so cool. Um, So, yeah, shout out to Hollis. You're amazing. Um, But, yeah, it's I love. I, I love you guys. You guys are the best. Um, just thanks for supporting me and everything in all these projects I'm working on. Thanks for supporting me in my struggles, you know, um, encouraging me, telling me I can do it. I, I'm very grateful for that. And, um, yeah. So anyway, I think, uh, that should just about wrap things up. I will end the episode with the song. You guys will have to let me know what you guys think. I don't know if you can like comment on Anchor. I'm not exactly sure, but on maybe on Instagram, you know, when it comes out, you can comment or something, message the page. I'm not exactly sure how that works, Um, but yeah. Anyway, thanks again, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.